Here's a little trivia. What has 691 horsepower, does zero to 60 in 3.1 seconds, and has enough room for a family and luggage? It's not a souped up minivan, it's this. This is the latest flagship sedan from Tesla. It's the Model S, but not just any Model S. This is the P85D. And what does D stand for? It stands for dual. This Model S has two motors and all wheel drive. In case you haven't seen it before, this is the Tesla Model S. It's got a sleek look with a solid front grille since you don't need the cooling since there's no gas engine. There's a couple small air intakes for fresh air. Standard are 19 inch rims, but on this one, you get hot looking 21 inch rims with a custom red paint job. To add some more cool factor and to make the car even more slippery, the door handles even recess. I personally think that this car looks extremely hot with the red and black wheels. If you like simple, then you'll love the interior of the Model S. This is as simple looking as you can get. There are no knobs or switches to pull or push anywhere on the front dash here. There's no knobs for the climate control. All you have is you have your steering wheel, which has volume control and a wheel here for voice commands. And you have your turn signal and your transmission selector. Basically, if you own a Mercedes, you'll be very familiar with those because that's where they come from. You have your speedometer in your front and then on either side of, of your speedometer, you can have your entertainment. You can have your navigation on the other side, whatever you want to program. The P85D comes standard with Alcantara suede interior, which is a really nice high-end look. Now, as for storage in the front compartment here, you have this big flat area here Perfect for if you want to put, uh, uh, if you're a woman, you want to put your purse there or things like that. But I find that there is a little bit lack of storage for a vehicle this big. There's there's no map pockets on the on the door panels at all. Uh, you do have one glove box in the front, but the center one here does not open up, so there is no other storage, which I kind of miss for you know putting your wallet, for your sunglasses, things like that. Now, speaking of the center console, these drink holders here. Here's my water bottle. Okay, it fits in perfect, but the problem is it's too far back. I'm actually reaching back to get it here. I wish it could be up front or, you know, like about here. Uh, you're not gonna put it on that flat area. It's gonna fall down. Now onto the main event, the 17 inch touchscreen in all Model S vehicles. This thing is awesome. And anyone that comes in, they just, they're in awe of like, wow, look at the size of that screen. Not only is it big, but it's extremely functional and easy to use. With the screen, you can do anything like closing the sunroof or opening the sunroof. You can change your suspension settings, your drive settings, where your steering mode is, uh, your acceleration, sport or insane, by the way, uh, lots of different things. Even your, your uh, heated seat and steering wheel are controlled through this beautiful, rich, display here. Go into the main display, you have a dock on the top, uh, very similar to what you have like on an Apple computer, which would be on the bottom. And uh, right now you have the entertainment on the top and you have a navigation on the bottom. Uh, now, the one thing that I really do like is this heating controls are actually on all the time. They're on the bottom, so you don't have to go through any menus. It's like having a manual control, which I love. I don't like to going through a lot of menus. Now, if you want, it's very easy to switch up what you're looking at. You have navigation and then radio here, but also you can actually go full screen. So there we go, we have full screen. I want to see the navigation, for instance, you can push navigation or I can just drag it into the screen. It splits it up. I wanna see a full navigation. Now this is impressive. You have a huge screen for your navigation. You can see where you're gonna drive for the next two hours if you want. You can pinch and zoom just like you would a tablet. Uh, it shows you where the superchargers are. If I hit this button here, it's gonna show me where all the closest charging stations are, regardless if there's Tesla or not, which is a nice feature uh, for web. Check this out, we can drag the browser in. Now this vehicle is equipped with a 3G connection and that's included in the car. So you have 
you can look up restaurants, you can look up different things, your passenger can look it up. Now the only thing is that it does not play flash, so you can't watch those everyday reviews while you're driving, unfortunately. But uh, it's a great, great display. We can make it full screen, very easy to see this way. You can scroll up. Uh, if I want to pinch in to, to read more, I can pinch in. Look at that. Amazing, amazing. And I want navigation. I just drag that back in. It's that easy. And say we want media, we want media, and we can just switch out however we want to see whatever we want. At first, it might seem a little cumbersome, but I can guarantee you, you really do get used to it and it becomes second nature to actually hit what you want because a lot of these things, you're not gonna be changing very often. You're gonna be starting mainly from your screen here where you will have your navigation probably and your entertainment here. Speaking of entertainment, since it does have an internet connection, let's just switch this over. It does have internet radio. You can use your voice command and you can play whatever you want or search for any music that you want and it'll find it. It's amazing. By the way, the stereo system in this P85D is spectacular. This does have an add-on system which costs about $2,500, but I can tell you, it really does sound good. And we have the camera. So this is gonna come on automatically if we're backing up. A very rich looking display, very clear. Now, the only thing that I wish is that since you have this huge, huge screen here, a lot of real estate for the screen, uh, I'd like to see them implement other cameras and maybe put them on the bottom, like an overhead view or a front view. Speaking of front view, this is a nice feature uh, as we're driving here. Um, this would come on automatically if we were properly driving, but uh, what it has, there's our rear view. You have your little car here. It's complete with parking sensors. And I'm gonna go close to something right now. And as you can see, we have objects to our left and to the front, and it tells me the distance, 34 centimeters. And I can go closer, closer, closer. And it's gonna tell me until stop, okay? That's safe to stop. Amazing feature, absolutely fabulous. Now this Tesla has the executive seat option, which comes with two bucket seats instead of a rear bench. This is great and they're really comfy, but if you have a family, I would go for the bench. Another reason, because the executive seats do not fold down and the bench seat does, giving you a lot more versatility in cargo storage. As usual, I like cars that are multi-purposed especially ones that have a lot of performance, yet have a lot of versatility or practicality. You open the rear hatch and you have tons of room. And as a family, we have a stroller, we have diapers, we have large suitcases and other things, and they fit in no problem whatsoever. And remember, if you do get the bench seat, you can fold it down and you get over six and a half feet of length. So on the road with the P85D, very quiet as you might expect, as we talked about uh, for the exterior, all the aerodynamic work that's been done. This car is very, very slippery. Power wise, well, let's get to that. The rear motors, 470 horsepower. And the front motor for the all wheel drive makes it another 221 horsepower, giving you a total of 691 horsepower. That's right, 691 horsepower. That's why this thing can make its run from zero to 60 in 3.1 seconds, which is supercar territory. Now, you might not be doing zero to 60s all day long, but where it's really handy is there might be a little bit of a pocket that you need to get into while you're driving. I'm on the freeway right now. Sometimes it's hard to merge. Well, with that amount of power, you just step on it and you're there. Amazing. Now, slowing the Tesla down is really easy. Of course, you have your regular brake pedal, but once you let off the gas, the car automatically really slows down quite aggressively because of the regenerative braking. Now, you can actually choose to have it actually less intrusive uh, where it doesn't regenerate as much power, so it acts more like a regular car. But once you get used to it, especially in the city, you barely have to touch your brakes at all. It'll come to a complete stop, as a matter of fact, which is gonna really save on brake jobs in the future. This P85D is also equipped with an air suspension. So you can set the height and at certain speeds, it'll actually lower the car for better efficiency. Now, one neat thing is, is that it actually works in conjunction with your GPS and say you're on a bumpy road or you know maybe you're taking on a gravel road or something like that where you raise the car up 
it remembers that next time if you go down that road in that same area, it'll automatically raise the car up for you or lower it and whichever the case may be. Pretty amazing. I do find the suspension a little bit on the harsh side. Uh, it'd be nice if there was a setting to make it even more comfortable, especially for passengers in the back. Considering how big this car is, and it's not light, it's almost 5,000 pounds, the Model S handles very well, uh, mainly due to the position of the batteries. The batteries are very low slung on the bottom of the car, making the center of gravity very low and making it feel like you're on rails. It feels like you're, this car is like on a string. You point it to where you want to go and it just gets there. It's really hard to describe what it's like driving this electric car with this much horsepower. It's, it's, it's addicting, first of all. It's, it's like crack. Uh, you know, they might ban this and make this illegal. It's extremely fast, but not only is it fast, it's, it's like having, uh, remember when you were a kid and you had the AFX slot cars and they basically, they just stuck to the track and the acceleration, they went from one side to the next side, it was insane. Well, that's exactly what this is like. It's insane how fast and how the, what, how the power comes on. That's the only way to describe it. It's almost like a difference of analog and digital. You have an analog car, which is a regular combustion engine, and it takes a little bit of time to ramp up the power. Um, and this is digital. This is like, there is no ramping up. It's on or off, and it's very, very, very precise. The second motor in the front provides the all-wheel drive and extra power. And I can tell you, traction is amazing. Most of the time when I had this car, it was pouring rain, yet traction was never an issue. Of course, one of the best things about a Model S is the range. They have a lot of batteries. You know, this is an 85 kilowatt hour battery, and the range is 253 miles or 386 kilometers, uh, which is more than enough for everyday driving, hands down. Uh, I've had it for a few days. I still plug it in onto my 110 outlet at home just to top it up. But other than that, uh, if you really do get in a bind, there's lots of chargers, level two chargers uh, around me at the mall, uh, at sports centers. Now, if you have kids, especially really young ones like I have in the back here, this is where the Model S really excels. In fact, this is where most electric cars really excel, but especially with the Model S, because it has such a long range battery, you're not really compromising anything. You can use your app, your Tesla app, and you can precondition your vehicle to specific times where you can actually go and warm the car up or cool it down. So imagine a, a real uh, hot summer day and there's nothing worse than putting a cranky child into a hot car and a hot car seat. They're, they're all enclosed in this car seat and they're sweating and it doesn't make for a, a good time. And then also once again, and also when it's cold out, you're, you're wrapping them up in all these jackets and blankets and things like this because it's so cold outside. Using the app eliminates all that. And even if you don't have kids, who doesn't want to get into a nice cool car or a nice warm car when it's hot or cold out? So that's one big plus. Now the second plus is, as you can see, Brooklyn here in the back is sleeping. And that's a great thing because she doesn't sleep very often. She has a hard time sleeping. And when she does fall asleep, it's a huge bonus. The thing though about her falling asleep is once she's asleep, I don't want to take her out of the car if, she, if it's nap time. So what do I do? I usually pull into a parking lot or I pull into my house, my driveway, and I sit there and I wait until she wakes up. You can't leave the baby in the car by herself, so what do you do? You sit there and wait. And once again, if it's a hot day, you have to run the motor because you need the air conditioning. If it's a cold day, which right now it's a very cold day, it's about four degrees out, and uh, you have to run it for heat. So you burn a lot of energy, you burn a lot of gas. Every time I'm running my car in the driveway, uh, I'm just looking at my trip computer as my mileage goes down, 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 just to keep the climate control on. Well, with a Tesla like we have right now, it could be minus 10 out, we're gonna keep warm, we're not gonna compromise. Of course, we're gonna use a little bit of power from the batteries, but we have such a long range. Now, if you are at home, if I'm in my driveway, I can plug it in and I'm just gonna actually use the grid for power and heat the car. I could even park this in my garage because there's no fumes, there's no gasoline engine. 
This by far is the best feature in any electric vehicle, especially the Model S. If you have kids, try it out. If there are any viewers out there that are watching this that actually own one of these cars, a P85D or even another Model S, can you answer me one question? Just make a comment below here. Does the novelty wear off? Because I'm telling you, this thing is so amazing to drive. It's, it's, it's so hard to describe. Uh, as for horsepower, yes, there's a lot of high horsepower cars and they are very good. I just recently test drove the Audi RS7, uh, the Panamera Turbo, of course, the Hellcats with 707 horsepower. They're great to drive on a daily basis and they go like stink but they still don't compare to driving this electric high performance car so i'm just wondering you know if i own this after a month or two does it get a little bit boring or is it still just as much fun every once in a while people ask me what's your favorite car and honestly i tell them i really don't have a favorite car there are so many good cars out there and everyone has different needs for what they need in a car and i just haven't found one that's met all my needs well, as of today, you can mark my words, as of today, if you ask me that question, I have to say it's the Model S P85D. This right now is my favorite car. And why? Well, it ticks all the right boxes. It has incredible performance, blinding acceleration, zero to 60, 3.1 seconds. Uh, you get all wheel drive, good for bad weather and for handling. Uh, the low center of gravity, this thing corners like it's on rails. The interior is very basic and plain, which I like. I love the screen. The screen's really easy to use and the practicality. If you have a family, seriously, you should consider owning a Model S if you can afford it. And the best thing, it's 100% electric, better for the environment. And this one has a super long range. So range anxiety, non-existent. Now the only downside of the P85D, like all performance premium vehicles, is they don't come cheap. They're expensive. This one starts at $116,000 and it goes all the way up. This one, as you see here, is $150,000. So you need pretty deep pockets to afford one of these. But remember, when you're buying one of these, you're buying into the latest and greatest in technology. And anytime you're on the leading edge, there is a cost.